Hello folks! Today I'm going to tell you an incredible story about a product that also promised to cure everything, but was actually an atomic bomb. That's right, you didn't hear it wrong, a product that seemed to be the solution to all your health problems, but was actually a danger to humanity. Want to know how this happened? Then stay tuned to this video until the end because I'm going to reveal all the details of this crazy plot. Have you ever imagined drinking water that promises to cure all your health problems, increase your energy, and even give you a radiant glow? Well, that's what many people believed in the early 20th century when Radithor was sold as a miraculous elixir. But what they didn't know was that this water contained radium, a highly radioactive and dangerous element for the human body. In this video, we're going to tell the story of Eben Byers, one of the biggest consumers of Radithor, who died a terrible death after ingesting over a thousand bottles of this deadly drink. The product in question was called Radithor and was sold in the United States in the 1920s. It was a colorless and tasteless liquid that contained small amounts of radium and thorium, two radioactive elements. Radithor was advertised as a revitalizing tonic that could cure everything from headaches to sexual impotence. The manufacturers claimed that it stimulated metabolism, increased energy and vitality, and even rejuvenated the body's cells. It seemed too good to be true, right? Well, there were a lot of people who believed in this deceptive advertising and bought Radithor without knowing the risks they were taking. Oh, one of these customers was a millionaire named Eben Byers, who was a famous industrialist and athlete. He started taking Radithor in 1927 after suffering a train accident and experiencing arm pain. He consumed about three bottles a day, thinking he was doing good for his health. But what he didn't know was that he was ingesting a lethal dose of radiation. We'll learn the full story of Eben Byers later on. For now, just know that Byers died in 1932 at the age of 51, with his body completely deteriorated by radiation. The doctors who examined his corpse said he glowed in the dark. But how is this possible? How could such a dangerous product be freely sold in the market? And how did no one realize the damage it caused? These are the questions I'm going to answer right now. You can't miss this continuation because I'm going to show you how Radithor was created, who was behind this fraud, and how it was banned after Byers' death. You will be shocked by the revelations I have for you. Uh, but before we continue, don't forget to like and share this video. Help us grow so that I can continue bringing these videos to you. Radithor was a patented medicine that is a famous example of radioactive quackery. The expensive product was used to cure impotence and other diseases. Radithor was created in 1918 by the Bailey Radium Laboratories, a company founded by William J. Bailey. Bailey was a former Harvard student who claimed to be a doctor but was not and he had become rich from the sale of Radithor, a solution of radium in water that he claimed stimulated the endocrine system. He offered doctors a commission of one six for each prescribed dose. Bailey took advantage of the popularity of radioactivity at the time, which was seen as something beneficial and invigorating for the human body. Radithor consisted of triple distilled water containing at least one microcurie of each of the radium isotopes, 226 and 228. These isotopes emitted alpha and beta particles as well as gamma rays, which could penetrate tissues and cause irreversible damage to cells. Radithor was advertised as the cure for the living dead and eternal sun. It promised to cure everything from dyspepsia to impotence, encompassing over 150 endocrine-related diseases. The product was expensive, costing around $1 per bottle, equivalent to approximately $15 today. But that didn't stop many wealthy and famous individuals from buying and regularly consuming Radithor. One of these people was Eben Byers. Byers was the son of an industrialist named Alexander Byers and received an elite education at St. Paul's School and Yale University, where he excelled as an athlete. He became the U.S. Amateur Golf Champion in 1906 after being the runner-up in 1902 and 1903. Byers eventually became the president of the Girard Iron Company, which had been founded by his father. Eben Byers started taking Radithor in 1927 after falling from a train car and fracturing his arm. 
He was advised by a doctor named Charles Francis McKenna to drink three bottles per day of the radioactive elixir to alleviate the pain and accelerate healing. <laughs> Byers was so impressed with the results that he began drinking Radithor every day, consuming over a thousand bottles within three years. He also distributed the product to his friends and family, convinced that he was doing them a favor. Eben Byers believed that taking Radithor gave him a feeling of vigor, but that feeling came to a halt in October 1930, by which time he had already taken around 1,400 doses. However, what Byers didn't know was that he was slowly poisoning himself with radium. The element accumulated in his bones, causing bone necrosis, aplastic anemia, cancer, and other serious illnesses. Byers began experiencing the first symptoms of radiation poisoning, headaches, fatigue, weight loss, and falling teeth. He sought help from various doctors, but none could diagnose his problem or offer a solution. In 1931, the Federal Trade Commission requested that he testify about his experience, but he was too ill to travel. So the commission sent a lawyer to take his deposition at his home. The lawyer reported that Byers' entire upper jaw, except for two front teeth, and most of his lower jaw had been removed, and that all remaining bone tissue in his body was disintegrating and holes were forming in his skull. His death on March 31, 1932, was attributed to radiation poisoning, using the terminology of the time, but it was caused by cancers, not acute radiation syndrome. His body was so radioactive that it was buried in a lead-lined coffin. When exhumed in 1965 for studies, it still emitted 225,000 becquerels of radiation. The death of Byers caused a major scandal in the press and public opinion. He was the first documented case of death by radiation poisoning in the United States. His case led to stricter regulation of pharmaceutical and radioactive products by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, the American agency responsible for consumer health and safety, Radithor, and other radioactive elixirs were banned and taken off the market. But what happened to William Bailey, the manufacturer of Radithor? Well, he was never arrested or prosecuted for the death of buyers or other victims of his product. He continued to defend Radithor until the end of his life, claiming it was safe and effective. He even occasionally drank the elixir himself, but in much smaller doses than Byers. He died in 1949 at the age of 64 from complications of a gallbladder surgery. He also had radium in his bones, but not to the extent of Byers. And so ends the story of Eben Byers and Radithor, one of the greatest examples of radioactive quackery in history. Don't miss our next story where we'll create a theory about an elixir that would have sold millions in the past. The greatest charlatan scheme ever imagined. But Bizarre Oddities is always ahead, even in our imagination. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. If you want to know more about this topic, please leave your questions and suggestions in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Thank you very much for your attention, and until next time.